Hi guys, Sandra here from Udana Styling and the Fashion Entrepreneur Club. So today in this video, I'm going to talk about 10 sources for reselling. Okay, so you can start your inventory today, okay, for your reselling business. So after publishing that video where I talk about the 30-day Poshmark challenge, I've been getting a lot of questions about, you know, where do I get my, my merchandise, right? My items. Um, so I mentioned in the video, and if you haven't watched that video, I'll leave a link below for you. Um, but I mentioned in that challenge that I am a fashion stylist, so I dress people for a living. And I, throughout the years, you know, after doing fashion shows and photo shoots and catalogs and things like that, I gather a lot of different items like handbags and purse and, you know, shoes and clothing and different things like that. And throughout the years, I use Poshmark to resell them. Items that are in great shape, that maybe they were used once, uh, maybe they were that I didn't get to even use them, and I know that someone out there wants them, I have used Poshmark to resell them. Now, I sell other things also in Poshmark, right? And, you know, I know that not everyone who wants to start a reselling business, you know, they do these kinds of projects. So I use different sources, which are the ones that I'm going to share here with you today, um, because you, anybody, you know, can start a reselling business, right? And there's different ways. A lot of people say, oh, you know, I have to go to my local Goodwill and that's it. No, there's so many options. And throughout the years, so many different things have popped up uh, in, in this world. So I'm going to share 10 of them with you today. Okay. So the first one is, okay, your closet. So I know, you know, it sounds, it might sound lame, but I know that in your closet, there's items that you can go ahead and resell right away. So when it comes to your closet, you know, I'm sure there are items that maybe they even have the tag on, you have never used them. Maybe someone gave them to you and they're, they don't fit you, or you bought something and you never return it, or maybe um, it doesn't have a tag, but you don't use it because maybe you don't like that style anymore, or again, doesn't fit you, or you just lost, you know, you, you stop getting, you get bored uh, of it, right? Or it's an item that really maybe you moved and maybe in the place that you live right now, the weather is different and then you don't use an item that item is like new so if it's an item that is in great shape okay great quality and someone out there is looking for you can go ahead and list it on Poshmark so items such as for example a jacket okay um or a coat or maybe jeans right if they are in good shape maybe you have something a silk blouse or maybe you have a pair of linen pants that you don't use Things like that that are valuable that people are looking for, right? Those are the perfect items for Poshmark, okay? And we can do videos also about, you know, what are those perfect items if you want. So let me know if, if that's a, a topic that you're interested in. But the first place, you know, is going through your closet. And even if you think, oh, I have nothing in my closet, just take the time, just take 20 minutes out of your week, right? To just go through the closet and be like, what is an item that I don't use anymore? What is an item that um, has tags on? What is an item that it's like new? What is an item that doesn't fit me? What is an item that someone else might be looking for, right? And, you know, you'll come out with some pieces. The second source is, someone else's closet okay so maybe your partner your husband or maybe your cousin or maybe your mom or you know people who are close to you your best friend right who wants to get rid of stuff right and instead of giving it to uh goodwill right maybe they can give the majority to goodwill and they can give you one or two pieces that you can resell in your closet in on poshmark okay so ask you know or offer even better offer to fix their closet, which me as a stylist, I did this for a long time. I used to go to houses and fix people closets. I would organize them, I detox them, I would put outfits together for them, right? And they would we would always end with bag or two bags or even three bags of clothing that they did not want to use right and what I used to do is if there was an item like a designer item right um that they really didn't want to get rid of because it was of high value and stuff and it was in great shape I would offer them to put it in my closet and we would split the profit right or make a commission of it or something like that so that's something that I used to do too and in your case um maybe you want to split the profit maybe you just want to 
maybe they're super nice enough to give it to you and then you can do it. So every time you clean out closets, right, you can definitely donate to a charity or people who, who are in need. But if there's that one piece, two pieces, maybe you find 10 pieces that are amazing that you know people are looking for, those are the great pieces to put in your closet, okay? Then, and I keep saying closet because in Poshmark, that's what you call your store, your closet, okay? Just in case you're like, what? <laughs> that is the term they use, okay? So the third source that I have is work, okay? So in my case, right, I did photo shoots and fashion shows and things like that. So from there, I would actually get some pieces that I could sell. Maybe you don't work in the fashion industry or maybe you do and because you're listening to this podcast and you're part of the Fashion Entrepreneur Club. But if you're not, right, um, maybe in your work, you still get stuff like in different, like if you work in events, for example, maybe you get a cute handbag or maybe you get cute uh, makeup or different pieces. Like if you work in PR, right, you get access to a lot of different things. Um, or maybe uh, even if you work in production in TV, I used to work in TV production. That's exactly how I started my career. And I started styling people on set. And you always have access to clothing, to all kinds of things, right? You have to buy things and you end up with all this stuff right that it's like new because you use it once I used to uh purchase and put together outfits for people for tv commercials and I would end up with all this clothing I would return the ones that we didn't use but then I would end up with this clothing that this model used for five seconds okay things like that so maybe in your work think about it okay um maybe it's not in the fashion industry maybe not in the media industry but maybe it is maybe it's another industry that you can still I mean on Poshmark, people sell things for the for home, okay? Um, so maybe if you're in the decor, right, industry, that's there are things that you maybe you have access to and you can sell those. Um, maybe, like I said, you work in PR and you have access to all kinds of different things. So think about, you know, things that you gather from that, okay? Because um, maybe it's a source. Maybe it's not a source for you for reselling, but maybe it is, okay? My fourth source for you are thrift stores. So this is where the goodwill comes in, where the Salvation Army comes in, where uh, there's one called Plato's. Like there's different ones depending where you live um, that have amazing, amazing merchandise and they offer it, right? $5, $10, $7, $2, $3, it depends, right? So these are, if again, if they're in great shape, if they're like new, some of them are new, right? Those are great pieces to add to your closet, okay? The next source of income is antiques, okay? So I love antiquing and I actually got more into it in Arizona. Now I'm in Florida, but in Arizona, I don't know, it's big. There's a lot of antique malls and things like that. And we used to go and gather different things. At the time, I used to sell also books online because I love books. So we gather different things and I always bump into a lot of cool items. And sometimes they're very expensive, but sometimes people who are selling, they don't know the value and they're very, very inexpensive. So if you like antiquing and if you like doing it for fun, um, that's another way to gather very cool items that you, know, you can sell in your closet, okay? The next one I have is local sales events. So that would be your typical Sunday or Saturday garage sale uh, or a state sale or a church sale or, you know, those kind of sales that happen at different places that, yes, most of the stuff perhaps is used, but a lot of people, especially when they're moving out, right, they're selling stuff that it's new, okay, um, that they, again, they have the tax on or they use once and they never used again. So again, you need to have a standard, of course, but if it's something that is in great shape, that is clean, um, that it's it's uh, of value and someone is looking for, you can get it for such a great price, okay? So people still sell things in garage sales for a dollar, for 50 cents, like it's crazy. So that is a great source. And if you're in a good neighborhood or if you go to good neighborhoods, you know, that that is a a lot of people say gold mine. I don't do that. 
anymore. Um, but in Arizona, for example, I used to do it because I was, I was, it was, I don't know, the weather also helped. It was nice, especially in winter. <laughs> you put a nice jacket and you go out there and you will find great things. So that's a great uh, source also. Okay. Another one is online. Okay. Nowadays, you know, you can do a lot of things online. So if you're that kind of person who doesn't want to go anywhere, you can still buy things online. Okay. So there are different uh, places, right? Um, even the Goodwill now has an option so you can buy bulk stuff online and it comes to your house, a box or something, and then, you know, you pay less and you get a lot of things and then you figure out, right? A lot of people, for example, use thread up, right? Where they can buy a bag of things and then also they can figure out what they can sell, okay? Or there's different uh, avenues out there. You just have to go online and start searching, uh, but you can start with the Goodwill and thread up if you want more sources please let me know and I'll be happy to share them with you, okay, when it comes to online shopping. Um, the other one is, which is within the online world, is the bidding part of it, which you can do online or you can do in person. And this is where, you know, that show with the storage units comes in, right? You can buy a storage unit, um, people who stop paying their storage right and the storage is there and it's full of things and you a lot of people bid on those and then they just use the merchandise in there right or you can bid online in different websites where they offer pallets right which is a big big pallet of a lot of clothing so you can make a very small investment and you get a lot of inventory okay um that you need storage for that you know whether you assign a room in your home for that or your garage or you have a storage unit, right? But that's another way. I haven't tried it. I work with a lot of people who do it and they love it. And it is very cost effective. I haven't dived into it yet, um, but I'm sharing it with you because I know it's the source of a lot of recent businesses. So I wanted to put it out there, okay? So you know. Um, a lot of people, if you want to start at a smaller scale right they have bids on ebay right and they buy boxes with a bunch of stuff a bunch of jewelry a bunch of uh, small tops a small small uh dresses or whatever you can look it up on ebay you can start um you know asking for that bulk merchandise and you know you will start finding leads uh different places different people who offer this and also it can be very cost effective okay the next one I have for you is online marketplaces. So when it comes to Poshmark, uh, Mercari, eBay and stuff, a lot of people like to source online using these marketplaces. So for example, let's say you go online and you look for a designer item, right? And if you type it in the search category uh, in, in Poshmark, let's say, all of these items are gonna show up, the different sellers, right, are gonna show up and you're gonna find different prices, right? Um, and some people are really offering very low prices. So what they do is they source that way, they buy something really um, inexpensive that they know can sell for way more and then they just resell it, okay? So I haven't done it myself, but again, I work with a person who has been very successful at doing this and she does it a lot with handbags. Okay. So a lot of people, they're moving, they just want to get rid of their handbags really quick and get some quick money. So instead of waiting for the handbag to sell for 200, 300, 500, whatever it is, right. They just want to sell it right away and you can find an item for 40 bucks or 50 bucks, whatever it is. Or some people also, they buy items that have a little flaw and then they 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 fix them and then they resell it for more, which is a whole other business, right? But it's an option for people. But what they do is, again, they just go through the different, uh, you know, you pick your platform, whether it's Mercari or eBay or, um, or Poshmark or any of these, right? And you buy items that are expensive, that are really high end at very low cost, and then you resell them. So that's another another way okay and you know you might think like oh all that work yeah but maybe you're starting out and you don't want to deal with so much inventory and you just want to start by doing a great item just think about it this is the way i see it because i love selling designer items if you buy a purse a handbag that costs two thousand dollars retail 
and you can buy it from someone for 50 bucks and you can resell it for 200, for 300, for 400, 500, right? Because it is a great deal for someone instead of buying the $2,000 one, which is new, but you buy a $200 one that is exact the same one, but it has been a little bit used, but it's in great shape. There's people out there looking for that and you can turn that $50 right into 150 for you and then you can buy more and you know it's just about doing the math and you will get there faster with a designer item versus a small item so it depends on what you want to do how much time you want to spend right and all of that and we can go into all those things but again i'm just trying to share different places and different strategies with you so you can see how this is doable okay and then my last one is actual stores so a lot of people avoid actual stores because they're like i'm not going to pay retail price but actual stores have clearance sales have 50 percent of sales have 70 percent sales have um, liquidation sales right especially now unfortunately in this economy right so an actual store right the main store of that brand that you're looking for who has excellent merchandise that is right there in the market that it's hot that people are buying right now you might get an amazing deal on one of those pieces and then you can go ahead and resell it so that's another source so if you like shopping like really really like shopping that could be a good one for you okay so yeah those are the sources that i have for you we have covered 10 of them if you have any questions about any of them please let me know. If you want me to go deeper into any of these subjects, please let me know. I'm super happy to share them with you. And my follow-up video is coming up where I say, you know, what happens in the next 30 days of doing Poshmark with the integration of all the different things that I learned. Again, if you want to watch the video, I'll leave a link below. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'm excited to keep creating these videos for you. So just let me know your questions below and I'll keep answering them, okay? Wishing you a wonderful rest of your week and a happy reselling journey. Bye, guys.